This is the Salt Gator, the world's first desktop soft gel injection molding machine. That means for the first time, small shops and homemakers can do what used to only be done in factories. I'm really excited about the possibilities here, especially for us makers. With 3D printers, CNC routers, and lasers, we've been limited to creating rigid, hard parts. But with the Salt Gator, I was able to take the molds I printed in PLA and use them to make all of these soft, squishy creations. That shift from rigid parts to flexible molded parts opens up a whole new lane for what we can design and build. Saltgator sent me this machine so I could show you what it could do. The machine ships with a couple starter molds, which I like because it means I could get started right away without designing or printing anything. I was creating in a matter of minutes right out of the box. I started with the gummy bear mold that comes with a salt gator. I poured in the non-toxic soft gel formula. I adjusted the temperature and hit the start button. It took about 10 minutes to get up to temp. Next, I immediately removed the gasket sealed heating chamber from the base and injected the liquid into the mold. I let the mold sit for about three minutes to allow the liquid to solidify. Then I opened up the mold and there it was, my very first gummy bear in the natural color of the soft gel formula. That was a win, but I wanted to see how it handled color next. So for the next round, I mixed some colored mica powder into the soft gel formula. I ran the same cycle, 10 minutes to heat, three minutes to set. I opened the molds and the result was these colorful gummy bears. So in less than 15 minutes, I had clean little gummy bears first in natural clear and then in custom colors just by adding a little mica powder. One of the coolest parts about Salt Gator is that it comes with a whole library of molds you can download and print yourself. So even if you're not ready to design your own right away, you've got options to get started. I'll be honest, I was a little skeptical too that PLA molds would hold up to the heat. But by following Salt Gator's print specifications, I had zero issues with deforming. I ran one mold through five full cycles and it performed perfectly. They gave me the confidence that the engineering behind Salt Gator is solid. They clearly tested this process and dialed in the specs. Sure, PLA will eventually start to break down, but for rapid prototyping and short runs, it works great. That's a big difference from traditional aluminum molds, which can take a lot of time and money and equipment to produce. Here you can go from an idea to a working mold overnight with a standard 3D printer. And where it really gets exciting is when you move past pre-made designs and start creating your own molds. You can make a design in CAD, slice it, 3D print it, and then fill it with the salt gator all in the same day. That workflow opens up so many possibilities. For me, one thing I was really excited about was making fishing lures. Here's how that process went. I started by browsing through a few mold designs I found online, picked a couple that looked promising and printed them in PLA. I ran a batch of the formula, injected it into the mold, and in minutes I had created my very own soft bait. I added color, doing multi-layer uh, injections and playing with swirls and fades. Some came out looking like solid factory style lures, while others had wild one-of-a-kind patterns. At one point, I wanted to see how far I could push it. So I scaled one of the lure molds way up and printed a really large bait. Running that with the salt, salt gator was a test in itself, but it worked and it gave me this oversized lure that looked awesome. The reality of going from wanting a new soft bait, 3D printing a mold overnight, and the next morning being able to take that out fishing is absolutely wild and the Salt Gator makes that possible. It's not just fast, it's practical for real hobbies. Then I decided to try something different, and so I bought some glow-in-the-dark powder. I mixed it in with some white mica powder, ran the cycle, and the results were awesome. The parts charged up under the lights and glowed bright in the dark. Since the machine can handle multiple injections, you can even layer or swirl different colors together so every part comes out unique. After making a bunch of lures, I wanted to push things a little further. What's something unexpected, maybe even kind of ridiculous, I could try? That's when I thought, a toilet plunger. Well, a mini toilet plunger. I downloaded the file and 3D printed the mold along with a separate 
handle. Then I set the handle inside the mold so it would get locked in when I injected the rubber area of the toilet plunger. For the mix, I poured in some of Salt Gator's soft gel solution, added a little white mica powder to give it some shine, and then injected it into the mold. Once it cured, I popped it out and had a one piece mini toilet plunger. A total gag gift, but the thing actually worked. That little experiment flipped a switch for me. Up until then, I had been thinking about making as choosing a method. We could 3D print it, or we could mold it, or we could use the CNC router. But when you combine methods, something more powerful happens. You're not just mixing materials. You're merging the strengths of two different processes into a single object. The rigid print handle gave structure, while the flexible mold cup gave function. Neither one of them could have done the job on its own, but together, they made a really cool tool. That's when I realized hybrid projects open up a whole new category of design. For example, you can embed structural printed parts inside flexible molds, like handles, frames, or threaded inserts. You can overmold soft layers onto rigid parts to add comfort, grip, or shock absorption. You can even embed electronics, magnets, or fasteners mid-process so the finished piece comes out already functional. And because 3D printing lets you make custom molds, you're not limited to standard shapes. You can design parts that are literally impossible to make with a single process. Once you start combining methods, you stop being limited by the boundaries of each material or machine. Instead, you can design around the interaction between them. That's where things get really interesting and you can create some really cool things. So after a day of running tests, here's what I've learned. The Salt Gator is fast, straightforward, safe, and it opens up a new way of creating most makers haven't had in their shops before. Salt Gator is designed with safety in mind, which makes experimenting approachable even if you've never molded anything before. We're used to subtractive and additive machining, CNC's, 3D printers, lasers, but injection molding has always been out of reach for small shops. Starting with gummy bears, moving into fishing lures, and ending with a plunger. It handled everything I threw at it. More importantly, it's easy enough that I can come up with an idea in the morning, print the mold, and by lunch have a usable part in my hand. Whether that's a new soft bait, I can take straight to the lake, or just a fun experiment. That's powerful for makers when you're prototyping, building products, or just trying new ideas. I'm excited to keep pushing it further. This feels like the kind of tool that sneaks its way into your regular workflow because it's fast, reliable, and creative. And this is just the beginning. If you wanna learn more about the Salt Gator soft gel injection molding machine, click the link in the description or go to saltgator.com. If you're new to the channel and wanna watch more, here is a curated playlist I think you'll enjoy. Click right here and I will see you in the next video.